episode 81 of the Tea and Possibilities podcast. I'm Nikki and this is a podcast all about knitting, crochet and making all the things here in Northwest London. You can find me on Instagram at hippie underscore Nikki and I will link to that and everything else I mention just down below. Where I can, I will be providing non-Ravelry links and they will all be clearly marked Ravelry and non-Ravelry so you can choose where you would prefer to click. I have spent some time on Ribbler over the past uh, couple of weeks, week, what is time? Um, and I have found Ribbler to be a really nice, um, easy to use interface. It doesn't quite have the um, capability, or at least I haven't found it, um, to store your own projects like you can with Ravelry. And it has an ever-growing pattern library. So I will probably be linking to Ribbler um, where I can. As always, a big thank you. If you are a new viewer, thank you so much for giving the podcast a shot. I really do appreciate it because I know how many there are out there. And if you are one of my returning viewers, thank you so much for coming back week after week, even though I don't record every week, um, especially after a week like last time, um, where I didn't really have much to show for myself. One thing I will uh, mention right at the top here is something I always forget. Um, I've had a Ko-fi Ko account um, for a couple of months now, maybe more, um, and I never mention it, uh, but that is linked just down below as well. If you would like to buy me a coffee, it will be a pumpkin spice one at the moment. Now, today's tea. But first, do you see this cup? This cup is amazing. So yesterday, my mum and I went to Windsor to visit Windsor Castle to have a look at Princess Beatrice's wedding dress. More on that in Knit and Natter. But while we were there, we obviously stopped in to the little gift shop because you've got to love a gift shop. This cup is the result of being an avid tea drinker and therefore an avid collector of teas and mugs and a recent binge of Downton Abbey. And I just thought how lovely it must be to have a saucer, which I'm probably holding in a way the Dowager Countess of uh, Grantham would not approve of. Um, so I should probably learn to get better at that. Um, but I have wanted a cup and saucer now, proper fine bone china for a few months. And I found this one online as part of the Royal Collection. And I kept thinking, well, you know, maybe I'll ask for it for Christmas. Maybe I'll treat myself at Christmas. And um, I didn't realize they stocked them in the shop at Windsor Castle. And they've got a huge variety of china and teacups and saucers. And on the whole, they're quite small. And that's great, especially if you use a teapot, which I occasionally do, um, because you can just keep topping it up. But you know, I like a good, I like a generous cup. So um, this one I saw, and it was the one I'd been looking at for ages, and I just think it is beautiful. It's got this lovely dainty little handle that kind of looks like a stem, uh, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. So I'm gonna put this down. First of all, it comes in a really nice box, and yeah, I will be keeping the box, and it will be washed and put away in the box really safely after every use, because I'm just that paranoid about breaking it. Okay, so it comes with this little kind of information um, card, and it is from the Royal Collection Trust, and it is English fine bone china, and it was made in England. Um, so this range of fine bone china has been designed and made in England exclusively for the Royal Collection. The designs are inspired by a unique collection made by Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother of Chelsea Porcelain, which dates from 1750 and is on display at Clarence House. Chelsea Porcelain, founded in 1746, is famous as the first English porcelain factory and is well known for its hand-painted botanical decorations. Um, and obviously the money kind of you spend buying these sorts of things goes towards uh, the Royal Collection Trust, which is a registered charity. And the aim of the trust is to care for the Royal Collection um, and the exhibitions and publications and all the kind of access that we enjoy um, to the palaces and places like that. So that's the little box. And I think if you've been watching the podcast for a little while or you follow me on Instagram, you will know I had to go for this. There were some really fussy patterns that were very pretty, but just not to my taste. Uh, there was one I almost got, which was just white and blue, but I had to get this look. I'm so scared to turn it and just spill it everywhere. <laughs> um, but it's got these beautiful flowers all around the cup. The saucer, I would tip up and show you, but it's got shortbread on it because, and again, I'm gonna put this down just to be safe. 
while there, and because we went to see the wedding dress, I picked up some traditional miniature shortbread um, that's kind of got the, I don't know, the pattern from the wedding. It's got um, Princess Beatrice's, I think that's her coat of arms, or similar. It's got B's on it, and it's got the letter B, so I presume it's something to do with Princess Beatrice. Wedding shortbread. Um, so I've got a couple of those on my saucer because it felt appropriate. So what I've got in this cup is, of course, my Fortnum & Mason Royal Blend. Because what else would one put in such a fine cup? And um, I have got two of the... I mean, they're not joking when they say it's miniature. I mean, look, it's my eyes are bigger than this. Uh, it is very good shortbread. <laughs> I mean, shortbread. Tea and shortbread. It's a toss-up between tea and shortbread and tea and scones. As my favourite, favourite treat. Which is... Borderline the most British thing I've ever said, but I did do 23 and Me, and it came back that I essentially bleed tea. So, are we surprised? Right then, let's move on to Whipped Up. So, this week, just as a heads up, I do have slightly more to show for myself. And I can hear the sighs of relief. There wasn't loads of content last episode, so my apologies for that. And thank you so much. I had so many lovely comments and everyone was so understanding and I really appreciate that. But I do have more to show for it this week. First up, we have a faux. And yes, I am calling this a faux. It is finished. This is, as always, based on the Granny Stripe pattern by Attic24. Very, very simple, back and forth, crochet stripes. Crochet, crochet stripes. It sounds so weird. I've said it so many times at this point, it sounds strange. Um, but yes, crochet stripes. And I have been working on this since December 2017. And it is finally finished. I cannot believe it. I'm just gonna give you a little glimpse that's the last of the rows. And yes, I still have ends to weave in. That is something I still need to do. I'm calling it a finished object. Plenty of ends to weave in, but I'll get round to it. I'm just not in any hurry to do that right now. There you go, that's the last few rows. I finished on one of my Destination Yarn Minis. This gorgeous kind of burgundy red that I was originally going to use um, in some Christmas socks and then decided, just made a cozy, kind of top edge to my cozy memories and I loved it. And in here we've got Destination Yarn, this uh, peachy one here, I think that was Destination Yarn or it was either Fine Fish. I kind of rolled up the minis I had from both and threw them in a bag, so oops. This one I can tell by the toothiness was one of my Opal um, advent calendars and this mint was a Fine Fish. And then we have another opal one. So I kind of alternated between those three. And it's gorgeous. And it's so nice. And I will take a picture of it and put it up on Instagram. But at the moment, it does sit folded up very neatly on my little armchair in the corner. And I just kind of move it when I want to sit there. I do want to put it on my bed. Because it has started to get a little bit cold. And I'm just, in case you're wondering what I'm doing, it looks like I'm swimming. <laughs> you can't see my lap. I'm just stroking it. Um... But yes, I love this and I would love to put it on my bed because it is getting quite cold. But it's only October and it's only going to get colder. So I, I kind of don't want to like shoot all my shots now. I want to have something, you know, in reserve to warm me up when it properly gets cold. So for the time being, she sits and looks beautiful on my armchair and makes me so happy because look at those, she's just, if I just scoop her up and she's just a mess at the moment because she's fallen out of her folds, but she's just, oh, it's just so nice. And I can't believe I finished it, but then can't believe a lot of things this year. I finished the Cozy Squares blanket. I finished pretty much everything I had on the needles. And when this was finished, I had only one thing left on the needles come to that but not yet um so yeah I'm just delighted it's such a simple pattern there's not a lot to say that's the bottom edge that's the edge I started on oh, but it makes me happy so happy 
And I know why everyone went crazy for them like three years ago and started casting them on, chaining them on, whatever the crochet equivalent is, that. Um, and I guess yeah, so I totally get why everyone went mad for them and wanted to work on them nonstop. I get it. And everyone's is going to be different. And it's just this riot of colour and fibre and it's just, oh, works. It shouldn't work, but it does. And I love that. The one thing that I will say about the blanket is that I've made it a little bit too narrow. I did chain enough to go along the edge of my double bed. I'm doing this because my double bed is here and you can't see it. Um, so I don't know why I gestured. Um, but I did do it so that it went across the edge of my bed. But it fit kind of perfectly with like it got to the edge and then kind of went eek, just over the edge and obviously chaining back uh, not chaining crocheting back and forth has ever so slightly seems to have in because I think when I uh, stretched the chain over I stretched the chain um, so it is a tiny bit too narrow I would probably make it three or four inches wider um, where I starting a new one however would I because what I realized is, because it doesn't have that overhang, when I roll around in bed, because I am kind of a wriggle in bed, um, and I kind of wriggle from one cold bit to the next, um, if there's too much weight over the edges, it is gonna just fall off. So I think that because she's just gonna sit on top, that it might not be as pretty as if you had the like cascading over the edge, but it's probably going to work better. I will report back on that in November, December, when I'm actually using her on the bed. At the moment, living on a chair. <laughs> living on a chair. <laughs> Next up, because lo, I have more than one whip this week. It's my first Christmas sock of 2020. So this is made with my vanilla sock recipe um, from Meanwhile at the Castle, their How to Knit Socks tutorial. And this is the West Yorkshire Spinners 2020 Christmas colorway, and it's called Silent Night. And I really like this. I don't know that I would have picked it for my Christmas box of socks because like Amy of Stranded, who originally coined the Christmas box of socks or Advent socks, whatever you want to call them, I are more on the traditional side of like reds and whites and greens. So this is not a traditional Christmas sock, but it, ha it has got very strong winter vibes because it's very blue, it's sparkly. I'm really hoping the sparkle is picking up there. And what I love about this is it's the first Christmas sock. Um, yes, I was just going through my head <laughs> in my head to see if I was saying completely false information. Um, but it's the first um, Christmas colorway from West Yorkshire Spinners that isn't a standard stripe. So we've got these like I mean, I don't want to call them lines because that doesn't sound particularly designery or, you know, romantic. Um, but we've got these like mini stripes of pale blue, dark blue. Like there's a blue in here that is pretty much black. And I just think it's lovely. It's so pretty. And I am using a mini of Destination Yarn Coastal Fog to put in the heel and I will use it on the toe as well, which have I got to, I should have to hand because it's attached to the sock. So just throwing things today. So there you go, that's Coastal Fog, which I've had since Stitches West 2017. So that's very handy. And yes, I pulled this out to show you and was like, wow, I really did not finish turning that heel. I was doing this while I was on a call. And as soon as the call finished, I got up and worked out. And I, I, gen I look, I just left mid turn. Every time I see things like this, I just think it wasn't so long ago, love, that you weren't even knitting socks. And now you're just like having this cavalier attitude towards half knitted heels. Last, but by no means least for my whips this week is something I did allude to at the beginning of the episode. And yes, it's my Kerry Town by Annie Lupton. And this is knit out of Willow and Lark Ramble in the Oxblood colorway. And I've said before, and I'll say it again, but I love the yarn, I love the pattern, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm hoping that becoming a garment knitter will hit me the same way that becoming a sock knitter did. You know, we can but hope. Slight story to this because this looks very much like what I showed you last time I showed you this and you wouldn't be wrong. Now the plan was to spend all day last Sunday in bed 
knitting on this. That was going to be it. I was going to put films on, podcasts on, but I was going to be working on this. Now, unfortunately for me, I don't respond well to biting insects. I got stung by a wasp the first time about three years ago on the shin and it made my entire shin swell up so that was great. Um, earlier this year I got um, bit three or four times on my arm by a mosquito and they took about a month maybe even six weeks to heal and even now the places where I had them can get a bit itchy. I think that's probably psychological though because I just suddenly thought oh they're itching now um but they swell up quite badly they get very very itchy and they're just really unpleasant um and I always have to take antihistamines because they're so uncomfortable I kind of have to take something to deal with the irritation so unfortunately on Saturday morning um I don't even know what it was it can't have been a mosquito but something bit me all over the face which was great yeah I mean it's my I tend to leave my windows open so like spiders and things just crawl or fly in so I don't know what it was um but whatever it was I was not having it so I had all these bites across my forehead and like I say oh there was like two and then I had a couple here um but it just made my face really angry and red and kind of throbby um and itchy so itchy so I had to take antihistamines and I, yeah, when I take antihistamines, that is it. I am out for the count. So I literally slept pretty much most of last Sunday. So yeah, did not get my kind of intense knit session, but um, you know. So that was a lot of, I mean, that's a lot of excuses for why I've made no progress. Um, but I did do two rows of ribbing on this before I conked out because I just wanted the ribbing a little bit longer. Um, and my plan is because these are on my chow goo. It looks like I'm trying to like, what's that thing where you kind of like try and find water? Divining or something? These are interchangeables. This is my interchangeable chow goo set, which I've had maybe five years at this point and was a lot of money at the time. And I was a newbie knitter and I just went for it. And I'm so glad I did because they have been a real investment. And every now and again, I get new tips if I need them. And it's just built out my collection. And I would cheerfully buy another interchangeable set um, because I think they are a great investment. Anyway, because they're on interchangeables, um, I'm thinking of casting on the back on a second cable and alternating between the two because then when I'm on a call or when I'm just watching TV or I don't have the brain space, I can work on the back, which is not cabled. And then when I do have the brain space, I can work on the front, which is cabled. And whenever I look at it on the needles, I always think, is this gonna fit me? Cause it looks so small. I mean, but if I stretch it like out to its proper widths, it does fit round there. I mean, obviously this is my bust, so. And I just think it just goes over slightly over halfway. Do you know what? I'm gonna knit it and see. What's the worst that can happen? So there we go. That is my plan for the Kerry Town because it'll be really easy just to screw off the needles um, and screw on the stoppers. Put one to one side, screw the needles on the other one and go. That's not how you knit, that's how you DJ. But, you know what I'm getting at. Now coming up, this is going to be a little bit of a roundabout explanation, but then hasn't this whole episode been just that? Um, but I haven't really spent any time in my bullet journal this week. It has been um, a really hectic week at work, which I feel like I say most episodes, but um, a particularly hectic week because we had an event. And when we have an event, it is uh, a lot. <laughs> and I, I end up working late because if it's an after work event, obviously I have to be there. Um, so yes, I was having a kind of a mad week and I pretty much just flopped into bed with a book and didn't do much knitting and definitely didn't do any planning because I just didn't have the brain space to do anything apart from go to work and then read. So what I want to do today um, or tomorrow, because let's face it, it's nearly five o'clock and <laughs> I really, really um, need 
need to clean my room and edit this. So tomorrow, um, one of the things I want to do in there is to make a list because I'm feeling a bit scrambled about what I want to knit next. Um, and that scrambled feeling in my head is a sure sign that I just need to write things down. Um, and is also a sure sign that I haven't been using my bullet journal. So this is what's going on the list. Obviously there will be other things as I'm writing it down that have not so far occurred to me, but these are the things off the top of my head. First up will be the Litmus Cow by Amy Florence. And I'm going to do that as a colour block cow using this. This is the um, Nora George yarns and it's 100% merino and it's called Rose Water and it's so pretty. This ball really doesn't do it justice. I wish I had a ball winder. Um, but you can see it's quite floofy, which is nice. And I think I'm going to pair this with um, a skein of West Yorkshire Spinners Poppy Seed, which is grey, because I think pink and grey looks really pretty together. And I'm going to just have half pink, half grey. And because I just don't think this all is enough to make one cow. Um, so yeah, that's exciting. I'm going to get that on the needles. I don't know yet who I'm going to give it to. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to kind of knit something really easy and put it away for future gifting. I also want to cast on fairly soon the Warm Brew Mittens by Joanne Bint and she very kindly donated a couple of patterns to the Summer of Socks Cal, so thank you. And this pattern is free and it's a simple pair of wristers, um, so your fingers are out and you've got a thumb and down one side, I can't remember if it's that side or that side, but down one side you have a really beautiful um, winding cable that looks like the steam rising from a mug and obviously I feel that, I feel that. Um, I don't know yet what colour I'm gonna do it in. These are going to be a gift for my nan who was saying it'd be really nice to have some wristers to wear around the house. Obviously her hands can get a little bit stiff, she has some arthritis, so she wanted some mittens. Um, or wrist warmers, I guess is the better phrase. And I thought I would knit them for her for Christmas. I don't really want to buy yarn. Um, because I have so much yarn, I feel like I 100% have to stash dive before I decide I don't have the right yarn for this project. I want something tonal, I want something warm. Um, nothing is springing to mind from my stash as being the perfect yarn for this, so I may have to buy some, but that's okay. The only prerequisite is that I have to have checked my stash first. The last thing on the list is going to be a pair of socks, which will also be for my nan. Um, if you watched earlier episodes that she was on, she had a go at knitting socks herself. At the moment, her eyesight is struggling a little bit, so she can't get on with the very, very thin yarn, but she does really like hand knit socks. So I know how far that West Yorkshire Spinners yarn goes. So I'm thinking that I am going to knit her a second pair, or knit a second pair for her. Um, she has smaller feet than me. I will definitely be able to get it out of that skein. I just don't know yet what contrast to use with it. So again, stash dive needs to happen. Now, as I said, I'm not super keen on buying yarn at the moment, and that's not because I'm on a yarn diet. It's because I have, in my opinion, enough yarn. Like, I have plenty of yarn. I could knit probably 20 pairs of socks and still have sock yarn left. So I kind of feel like I do want to do stash diving before I buy. Obviously the exception to this is Christmas yarn because as you know, every year I buy um, the Christmas colorways from Amy of Stranded and West Yorkshire Spinners. And as you've seen, I've already cast on uh, my West Yorkshire Spinners and currently um, on its way to me is Amy's 2020 colorway, which is Zooming Home for Christmas. And that is zooming its way to me. I'm so funny. Also on its way to me is some more Debbie Bliss Rialto DK um, in orange and green because yes, I am knitting another baby pumpkin hat and it's not for me, it's for somebody I know through Instagram who I am delighted to see um, after a long struggle with IVF is having a baby and I had wanted to knit the little one something for ages and then she recently posted that the baby was due like literally in a week, a few days, and I was like, oh, how did that happen? I feel like you only said you were pregnant two weeks ago. Um, because yes, time. Time has absolutely no meaning in 2020. So I'm knitting a little hat and 
I love that pumpkin hat. It's such a quick knit. I can knit it up in an evening. It's cute. It's got really good cute factor. <laughs> So that's it for Whipped Up this week. Hopefully that was a little bit juicier than last time. And now let's move on to Knit and Natter. So as I said, uh, my mum and I went to Windsor yesterday. I did take the day off for it. I tend to take the day off to do these kinds of things. I took a day off to go to Hampton Court Palace in February. And the reason I do that is because I prefer going when it's really quiet. Um, I think I went to the Natural History Museum for the first time in a really, really long time on a weekend a couple of years ago. And it was just a nightmare. It was so packed, which is great to see, obviously. Um, but it's just not the greatest experience. And at the moment, I'm not doing, I was gonna say a mad amount of traveling, but any traveling. Um, so I don't see any kind of disappointment occurring because I've wasted my time off. So why not take the day off to have a nice long weekend and go and do something cool with my mum. I did take some video, um, but unfortunately you can't film in the state apartments. Um, so honestly, I don't know if I'm gonna have enough footage to pull together like a Windsor video. Um, but if I do, it will be on the channel. But yes, we went to Windsor Castle, which I have never been into. I've been to Windsor before. I think I was there last year for my birthday. I was on the way back from my birthday celebration and we stopped off in Windsor. Uh, we didn't go into the castle. And the reason my mom and I wanted to go is because we wanted to go and see Princess Beatrice's dress in person. Now, for those of you who don't know, pin Princess? <laughs> So for those of you who don't know, uh, Princess Beatrice is one of the Queen's granddaughters. Um, she got married, I literally don't know when. Does it say on this little box of shortbread? No, it does not. I mean, she got married in like, I wanna say June or July. Like it looked like quite a nice sunny day. So she got married earlier this year and I was, fascinated by the dress. So the dress is one that the Queen had previously worn um, when she was very much younger in like the 60s to I believe it was the state opening of Parliament and the Lawrence of Arabia premiere and it is gorgeous. It's by Norman Hartnell um, who I believe is a cousin of William Hartnell, who was the first doctor, but that's a side note and potentially wrong information. So like, don't put that in an essay or anything like that. I could be wrong. Check your sources. Um, so yeah, I thought it was gorgeous. I really enjoy a lot of Norman Hartnell's um, designs. They're quite old school, they're quite traditional, but they've got that kind of fairy tale element that is just so pretty. So because of the COVID-19 situation, her uh, wedding had been canceled, I guess we would call it, um, because it hadn't been rescheduled. Um, so she ended up having a very, very tiny wedding. Um, I think they only released a handful of pictures. She, unlike her sister and her cousins, did not have a televised wedding. And all you saw was this beautiful dress um, that was very quickly identified as one she had borrowed from the Queen and had been adapted. So where the Queen had this big frou-frou skirt on it, the skirt looked like it had been slimmed down and a band added to the bottom. These little sleeves were attached. I hate the sleeves. I'm really not a fan, but that's a side note. Um, so my mum and I really wanted to go and see it. And it was so beautiful. This dress is so, like you walk into the room and it's just there and it glitters. Like the, the diamantes, there's just rainbows. And they really, the pictures that you see, although they're beautiful, and very romantic they just do not do the dress justice and i think it's incredible that this dress is what 60 years old at this point and has been so lovingly cared for and so lovingly updated um and respectfully done because i believe that the sleeves and the band at the bottom um were added without removing or damaging the original dress in any way and can be removed to restore the dress to its kind of original glory. Um, I will say I was really disappointed with the content of the exhibition. I don't think they called it an exhibition, to be fair, but you've literally just got a room 
with like three of those standing banners with a little bit of information. So a bit of information about the day, a bit of information about like uh, how the Queen previously wore it, um, a little bit of information about Norman Hartnell, um, who um, I believe it said had been regularly inspired by Charles Frederick Worth who I hadn't heard about until this year when I got really into watching Bernadette Banner and Kathy Hay. Um, so I found that really fascinating um, because now I've looked up um, a lot more of his dresses, I can see that kind of inspiration and that's really cool. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is the information there was limited. For somebody like me who wanted to kind of learn more about how did she go about choosing which dress to borrow? Was there a range she chose from that the Queen had kind of okayed for um, lending? Um, how did they go about deciding on the puff sleeves and the band? What were the other ideas they had? How exactly have they done it so that it doesn't affect the original dress? That's what I wanted to learn about and that wasn't the information I got. But it was beautiful. Um, and I was quite surprised by how tiny she must be because the things in a glass, I was gonna say cage, I meant booth, not booth, but like a glass coffin. None of this sounds good. <laughs> case, it was in a glass case. Gosh, and it's on a plinth, obviously. Um, but as I stood next to it, and I really wish we could have taken pictures because then I could show you. Um, but the top of the dress came up to about here on me. And the plinth was about this big. So she must be so dainty. And the waist was absolutely miniature. Um, so yeah, it was just amazing to see in the flesh. It really was. But I just had the same feelings, which I think I shared in February when I went to see the, um, I've forgotten what they're calling it, but the, the altar cloth, Bacton altar cloth, which they believe pretty much is a part of a dress that Elizabeth I wore. I wanted to read and like learn all about the process of restoring that and it was one room with really limited information and the bits that they gave you were like these little tasty little nuggets about the embroidery and how they went about restoring it and I was just like I want more. Um, so if anybody is watching please make documentaries about both these things because I will eat them up. But yeah I would really recommend going to Windsor Castle. I'm so upset that I couldn't take any video or pictures in the state apartments. I went to get postcards afterwards and they were not, they weren't the pictures that I would have taken, so I didn't buy them. But you know, there's this whole room that's just filled with all of these gifts from around the world that the Queen has received from like visiting dignitaries and stuff. And it's so cool. And I can't share any of it with you. It was about 20 quid to get in, but they had this thing where if you sign the back, you can come back anytime in the next 12 months for free. So you can't argue with that. It was a bit of a grotty day, so we didn't do too much wandering about the grounds. So I definitely like to go back and do that um, on a less grot bags day because I was not dressed for it because I figured we were gonna be in the car and the castle. So I didn't have a waterproof coat on, I had a wool coat on, but it was great. I had a great time, highly recommend. It's not too bad a drive from London, it took us about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, because there was traffic, pretty straight, it was really good. But that's it for this week, I will see you very soon. In the meantime, mask up, stay safe, and I will see you very soon for another cup of tea. Take care, bye. So